Cool. So you remember the hemiacetals that we talked about with aldehydes and ketones? No, not ringing a bell. We'll go back and watch the video. Let's look at an aldose, and this is going to be true of the ketose as well, but ketoses get a little bit more complicated. So with our aldoses, and for simplicity, let's just put them all on the right. If you think back up to it, we talked about forming acetals and hemiacetals by reacting an alcohol with an aldehyde or a ketone, and this protect, created a protecting group for us that only disappeared underneath, I believe it was basic or second conditions. Go back and watch the video. So, the thing is that we have a flexible carbon chain, and what can happen with aldoses and ketoses is that they can self-react with each other, with themselves, in order to form, in this case, what's called the pyranose form of the aldose. So what will happen is that one of these alcohols will attack the aldehyde, and we will end up producing a, an acetyl or a hemiacetyl that is a ring. Now, the type of ring we formed, as you may guess, is ideally a six-membered ring. But if we have something like a pentose, which has five groups on it, the best we can do is form a five-membered ring. But if we have a hexose or a septose or something like that, we can definitely form the six-membered ring. What makes this complicated is that we're going to pick the alcohol. That when we count the number of atoms between the alcohol and the carbon, we should be able to get six. So if we start here, one, two, three, four, five, meaning that this six here will be the alcohol that reacts, not this alcohol. So when we form these pyranose forms, and we actually in around and forming these loops, what we end up doing is we forming, form it with whatever alcohol will give us a six-membered ring, starting with the carbon and connected to the aldose, and terminating with an oxygen being the six member of the ring. Now, when this occurs, and let's highlight it up, this will be our red oxygen. We end up forming a loop. Now, the question is, does this alcohol go up or down? because when we do this reaction, we are going to end up producing an alcohol out of the al aldehyde. Well, that depends, and we'll talk about in the next video when we'll talk about the alpha and beta forms, but we're actually going to get both forms, and in principle, they're interchangeable because this is a reversible reaction. But in this case, to figure out what happens, we end up forming CH3 group and CH CH2OH, and the alcohols here, we bend it, sorry. So we got that alcohol, that alcohol, that alcohol. Depending on which form we get the alpha beta, we'll end up forming the alcohol either up or down. Now, why did I say this was a bit more complicated with ketosis? Well, ketosis, we've got an additional group hanging off here. We've got a ketone group. So not only are we going to have an OH group that's formed when we do our Hayworth projection, we're also going to have to account for this group here. So in this case, it's a CH3, but it could also be a CH2OH, groups like that. But this is what happens with these complexes. They like to form the pyranose forms. They like to form the rings for two reasons. One, that this is actually much more stable if you form the six-membered rings. And two, you end up just st basically stabilizing. So. There you go. That's what happens with these aldoses and ketoses is that they do end up forming loops with themselves.